Man, you come right out of a comic book. Poke the Pixel Media. Exploring the media multiverse of geek culture. He meddled in things Hi, I'm Gotham Sharan, creator of The Last Earth from Pulp to Pixel Media. Uh, today I'm going to be doing a art process sort of video. Um, one of my big art processes is reading comics, looking at other comics, getting inspired by comics. So today I actually went to a local um, used bookstore. A shout out to uh, Books on 7th, which is at like 7th Ave and Hatcher in Phoenix, Arizona. Um, I highly recommend going there. They have a bunch of short, they have a whole set of comics in the back that are like basically, unless they're pop marked, they're like 75% cents a piece. So, you know, less than a dollar, I got a stack of comics that's awesome. Um, and so I'm gonna just go with those, through those with you today and kind of show you, oh, that's my dog, Han Solo. <laughs> I'm gonna show you, uh, he has his own Instagram, so. If you want to follow him too, um, we'll we'll go from there. So let's take a look at the first book I picked up. Now, this one was a totally serendipitous uh, discovery. I have been listening to the audiobook of the Hawk Moon um, Michael Moorcock series. I love them, um, and I basically listen to these while I draw my panels right now. So I'm a huge Michael Moorcock fan, Elric. Um, I really actually like the quorum books, the first three quorum books. And um, I'd actually, I'm going to have to get a shout out to, to uh, Breakfast in the Ruins, which is a um, Michael Moorcock podcast. Um, you can find it on YouTube, but it's also your podcasters. Definitely check it out. It's really cool. Um, they're deep diving this whole like sort of, uh, you know, literary canon and specifically the Eternal Champions. All right. So I really wanted to have been into this because it has a sort of future destroyed earth recomp, you know, people, earth has come, come back um, with science and magic mixed together. Uh, and I just absolutely love that. And that's actually really, you know, a lot of the flavor and theme of the last earth as this sort of super future earth where, so much super science and then like, you know, mysticism has occurred that, you know, it's just a planet where you can just find all of that stuff. Um, but with still this sort of barbarian, medieval sort of uh, mentality to it. So I wasn't able to get a full set. <laughs> and I'd been thinking about finding these, but I found these and I was like excited because I almost immediately found them. Not because I was like, I thought about it, but H was just right at the right height for me to look at first. Um, so I got the first three, three of the Jewel of the Skull and then one of the Rune Sap. So uh, there are four books in the series and um, so four issues. So I I hope to get a full collection of these. Uh, looks like who's on and just look at some of the art. Look at some of the art on this. This is pretty awesome. Um, there's a couple of places I don't like. I think the the whole mask thing is supposed to completely cover the faces of the Grand Britannian. So that's the something. Uh, I'll, you know, I'll do deep dives into all of these books later. But uh, this is, I believe, uh, Raphael Cannon and Jerry Conway. Uh, yeah, Jerry Conway, Raphael Cannon, Rico Vival. I don't know some of these other people, but I definitely know Raphael Cannon for, as um, the penciler on uh, Firestorm. Fear of Firestorm. All right. So now this was definitely on my plan hunt for. Um, I wanted to get some Greater Mercury comic books. I have been really thinking about like, you know, just loving those books and how and how like I had a real impact on me. You know, I, I realized I drew a lot of like grips like characters for a while there too. Um, and so I wanted to kind of re-get those books because I don't have them. I don't think I have them in my collection anymore. So, or I can't get to them. So I'm kind of maybe potentially double dipping. Uh, so I picked up. So this is these are ones I knew I don't have though. Um, so this one, I was, uh, I, so I got a number one. So as I was going, I was basically picking 
books that aren't no Marvel or DC, you know, um, I wasn't even, I was even trying to like not miss on even like dark horse or image too. Like I, I wanted to go for, you know, all these eighties in the black and white or potentially, but otherwise comics that were coming out. Cause you know, I kind of feel that's the energy that I have a bit of now. I would say I always felt like some of the greater Mercury artists weren't so great. <laughs> you know, the art wasn't quite there, but this one is like definitely got shades of what I would say is the future of, you know, image extremeness. Look at this guy. Like he's all like gun hand and extreme. So we're looking at, and this is, what are we looking at? Uh, 80, 90. So this is 90. So this is right in that era, right? I will say though that this is, and I'm so happy it's early in the book, but that face right here i think is one of my favorites it's totally twisted and and bent and i can't tell if it's a mistake or not but like it's it works for me it, it really gives this cartooniness right there and i actually love the inking on the jacket as well it really gets the the leather across so that's another thing too you know I, i'm not just looking at the designs and stuff as i go through these things I'm also looking at, you know, what's their brush techniques? You know, what are kind of the tools they're using? Because right now I'm doing, yeah, like all of the, they all had this look, you know, this is just basically another grips, dude, you know, but I still like this guy's art a lot. Like, um, I almost feel it's a bit wasted on this. I think he could have done something, you know, and I hope he's done something else. I don't know this guy, uh, this guy's art, so I can't say for sure. But it says it is uh, Frederick Cooper. So, you know, if you know who that is, uh, tell me in the comments below. And, you know, he did the cover, inks by uh, Richard Becker, Benny Gugliotti. Or, so, ooh, I don't know how to pronounce that right. Okay, so that was pretty cool. Psychopath. Um, Eradicators. So I definitely would see ads for these because I got a bunch of the Grips books. Um, I was just really into Grips. And... Weirdly, I'm pretty sure I got the books off of the spinner rack at a grocery store. So that was wild for me because it's always seemed like the kind of thing you'd have to get direct market. But there there was this there was this bashes near our house and it has it, it had the a wild spinner rack. Let's let's just say um, I love the art in this one. This one, too. I took a look at it. Love the black and white. Um, love this heavy line. Like, look, that's great. Usage of dark space seeing it here some good penmanship i think this it says it was ron Lim. i believe it said it was ron Lim. i looked it up because i couldn't find it so right off the bat no credits in that first page no like indicia it's a, well i guess it's over here but it doesn't really tell me who wrote or drew it so i actually have to look it up and i believe it's ron Lim. if it's not you know, again, and if you guys know, any of you in the Outlaw comic series, ah, look at that grips. Now, one of the things that is cool, though, as I was looking at this book, is it has a grips introduction to it in the back. And that is super cool. So, um, as someone who's just re rekindled my, my love of that, that is top notch. Ah, oh, look at that. Look at that Tim Vigil. Great, great. Liberty. So, uh, that's right. He's Got a different name. Oh, that Silver Wolf title. Look at that, that penman work. I love it. I love it. All right. Um, so this is actually, so this was Silver Wolf. So this is older. This is 86. So this is, and this issue is coming out right before, or 85, I think. This is, is coming out right before Grips comes out. So, um, cause they have like a huge, like, who's Grips? Like preview at the back, like mostly text. Okay. So, I, the art was not bad. Um, it it really struck me as who was it again? Sorry, it is uh, Chris Silver on the writing, but Nigel Tully. I I I didn't mind it. I liked it. I liked it. Um, I will say this: it definitely hit me a lot of, you know, this is this guy is like, you know, trying out for role playing game art, and I'm again, I'm totally here for it. Um, I've got a future video planned where I'm going to kind of show off some of the, my other art influences and, uh, oh, see, Psychopath. He looks a lot better in that picture there. And, oh, Nightmaster. 
So this is the one actually I would like to get because that's the other Tim Vigil one. And I absolutely love the look of that guy. So I want to get more of that Tim Vigil on my message. This guy is just, yeah. So we've got a couple of, all right. So yeah, so mostly, you know, I would say almost like RPG art. Like I could totally see these as being like a couple of these pages, you know, getting slotted into a champion's module or or a villain's and vigilante's module or something like that. Um, and that's that. So uh, for the most part, the least expi- inspiring of the three art wise. All right. So uh, actually another shout out here. I'm going to have to give a shout out to uh, the uh, the guys making Turbo Pit Fighter. Um, you can also find them on YouTube as well. Um, they're going through their process of making their sort of post-apocalyptic comic as well. And um, I've really been enjoying that, watching those processes and stuff. Uh, so in fact, a part of the reason I'm sharing my our process videos as well. Um, they recommended Kira, or at least they had shown this as some of the introduction. Um, interesting, I, I don't know if I'm as in it with, like actually some of this art looks good. It, it was kind of hit or miss. I kind of sort of, went through it pretty quickly and there were times I was like, I liked it. And there were times I was like, eh, I could, I could leave it or go, but um, it was a nice addition. Actually. I do like the addition and it is good that it is, you know, definitely representing this sort of like buff lady instead of the, the sort of, you know, runway models, you know, uh, the Mark Silvestri runway model, super, super women, or, you know, um, which I love up on those i love those okay so next um it had ninja i've just been in a ninja kick recently and it was a ninja book so you know i'm i'm and especially it's like american ninja so very in the middle of the 80s so i got this for the pure canon films of it you know (laughs) um i will say that i do like the art uh i believe it is who do we have on the yard on this one? Uh, Kevin Farrell. Uh, you know, it's not in this issue. So in this issue, they don't really. So this is 87. I do like that. That piece right there is really great. Um, but yeah, this is definitely one of those, you know, Ninja Girls, but American Ninja Girl, you know, sort of books. Um, I like it. I like the potential. I like some of the brushwork on this. I think there's a lot of like ink wash being used. Um, and I really like it. The gray tone, uh, unless they're using some of the tone technique. So if anyone knows in particular what they might be doing, I did like that a lot in this one. Um, but for the most part, like this one and the second one, I got another one. Um, this one was definitely like, I mean, it was there sort of like Vietnam jungle warfare story. If not Vietnam, I actually haven't read it. I'm, I'm mostly just looking at the art right now. And honestly, that's a lot of what I look at. I, I don't really like necessarily go and read in the stories. I want to see if I can figure out the story just by the art itself. Um, I really feel that's the kind of thing that you know makes a book really, really sing. And I just, you know, I this one was not my favorite, mainly because, um, oh, you can see some screen tones, uh, mainly because it, it just, I couldn't latch onto anyone, just even just visually going through it, you know. Um, but you know, I'll definitely once I'll, I'll probably dig in and read it pretty soon here. Um, but that was it. All right, so a couple more, I got a few more here. Um, so Darkwood, uh, I think I got a different one of these, but you know, it's it, this is a straight up fantasy book, but I will say the color printing on this is really good and i guess this is out of canada so this is so it's aerosol but it's like it looks like if a mailing in canada so it's either the people made it or canada or not so adrian kleinbergen this is illustrated by and i do love that they say illustrated by so because there is a real picture book quality to the color and uh, and some of the art as well it's kind of like 
a picture book artist like doing a comic and and again i like it i i actually really like it I, you know story wise it seems just from what i can see you know it's a pretty standard sword and sorcery sort of thing so nothing to nothing over oh maps i love fantasy maps anytime i can have a good fantasy map uh i do like it and i'll definitely check into this more uh nice ad on the back let's see um is that john k schneider the third i would have to see that looks like his art you know what i will <laughs> we'll probably tag him on Instagram and find out. Okay. Um, Gantar, The Last Nabu by John Peck. I like the art. Um, it was a little like... I wasn't too excited by some of the panel. I think like camera-wise, it, it felt a little static. Um, which, you know, on, honestly, I'm trying to fight myself with my work. I always find it takes me a while. I really feel like it takes me a bit of a time to rhythm. Ooh, I do love that special effect, hand-lettered special effect with the stippling. That looks really good. And I, you know what? That is a pretty cool sort of fantasy warrior woman uh, garb. So I'll definitely, uh, oh, you know what? This guy here, check that out. That's awesome. All right. So these are, this is pretty cool. I, it's, I love the lettering, actually. I think the lettering was the thing that's kind of winning me over the most. Um, which, you know, I'm trying to do my own hand lettering. I'm not trying to do mechanical lettering in the, the last earth strip. So I'm definitely appreciating this. Um, I just feel, you know, this guy should have thrown in some more screen tones. Like he needed some tones in there. Like it's a little too white. The, the background, it's not kind of giving us any more gradations. You know what? I don't know where this guy is from, but I like that design. That looks cool. Uh, especially with, oh, I have, that may gives me ideas. Um, I, you know, Target Comics, like, uh, that sounds like an old, you know, Golden Age produce, um, publisher, but like, never heard of it before. But definitely cool. All right, Cyberhawks, uh, Tales of Neil's Legend. So this is very much, um, I read a little of the, the beginning. Uh, this is, an America, America manga, you know, they loved Gundam, they loved Starship Troopers. And I don't really have to say much of that. I do like the tech designs. Um, you know, they they have a very like, I feel while he's going for this definitely manga style, I feel there's still like a very, you know, American-ness to the design. Which I appreciate, but it's good. It's good. It's a uh, look at that heavy. Oh wow! Look at those big dots, um, tones. I wonder how they got. You just buy, if they were able to just buy screens that big. Whew. I do not cut screens. I, I I draw digitally, so I I have a brush, a digital brush, it, and I do not feel it is human. That is what you should be using, you know, AI for to help keep you keep cut down the labor of cutting screens, <laughs> which. Are fun. I've done it, but it's it's time consuming. That robot there, that is a pretty cool design. I like that sort of juggernauty. All he needs is like a missile pod, like that open up and like just come out in a spiral pattern, like out of Robotech. That'd be perfect. Yeah, no, I mean this is this is you know I was definitely here for it. You know, a lot of these books, I'll I, I'll say it again, a lot of these books definitely look like somebody's role playing games. You know, and I. I I have this same era, you know, playing, you know, Palladium, Riffs. <laughs> In fact, what year is this? This is the Pyramid Comics, which I've never heard of before. And this is 87. So kind of just really kind of getting into role-playing games myself, just a few at the time. Probably had villains and vigilantes for sure. And maybe the, probably the Marvel Superheroes game for sure. I have to look again. All right, uh, Chrome, I, I just, it was a number one. I, I kind of like the cover. The cover really kind of spoke to me. And then I looked, and if you look closely, you can see, I'll try to bring it a little closer or a little better light on it. 
Kelly Jones. So this is Batman, Vampire Batman, Kelly Jones. Early, early work. I don't know if it's his first work, but it is, it's good. You can see his, his chops there. Although I feel like he's reaching for another artist. Like, he's definitely not like Kelly Jones. I mean, I see like, that or it's the ink. Who's inked him? Let's see who, if they have a listing of who did the inking. Um, I'll have to keep looking, but that is Kelly Jones for sure. And art's good. Oh, here we go. Uh, Jim Sinclair. You know, I think I know that name before. I wonder if he did, if he did inking for some of the, um, there's some artists where it looks like their work but they're different artists. And I wonder if this is, it's because of him. Oh, Peter Gillis on the writing too. So Peter Gillis and Kelly Jones came up with this and um, I'm going to have to look up Jim Sinclair, but cool Kelly Jones work. Um, definitely like the look, uh, sort of sci-fi kind of fair. So I'm sorry. I realized it was coming off the side there. Yeah, but eh. We'll definitely give it a better, better, deeper dive look some other time. All right. So, um, so this was John Stranod and Dennis Fujitake. And I, I just pure, this art is just, the color art here is great, but this guy's line work is very, very good. This is, I know Jan Stranod's name. I just can't, I can't put it to who the, the works he does. I'm sure I, I heard it on like the Cartoon Escape Aid channel or something. Um, but I like this. Uh, I like this a lot. This has got, um, it, you know, it's got a heavy metal feel. Definitely feels like a heavy metal artist who's kind of either getting into the American market or let's see. Oh, Alan Moore wrote this. Oh. And uh, Steve Parkhouse artist. Oh, that's the Bo Jeffries. So, who's, oh, so this is actually, so yeah, so this is actually an Alan Moore written story. Interesting. Oh, nice. Well, you know, I, you know, I picked up a lot of these without like, just on the covers and the, or the art inside. Some of these were in bags and I didn't open them up. I could have, it was a used place. So it wasn't like I was like devaluing them or something, but I just, uh, I sometimes like to go that way, but this one. Okay, yeah, this is Alan Moore as well. Um, it's kind of Alan Moore doing like what would be something almost out of heavy metal, just, you know, no nudity so far. <laughs> um, so, yeah, no, I definitely jump into this. Let's see, any cool ads? No, they're kind of pushing this pretty heavy there. Um, Let's see. Same thing. Alan Moore, Steve Parkinson. Uh, Christine Scherer on color. Color is really good on this. Um, this one is... Yeah, this really feels like an art book. Like, this really feels like an art magazine. Like, these are the people coming from an art magazine or something like, you know, like I said, like Metal Hurlant or like um, uh, Heavy Metal. Um, I'd have to look it up. I'm, you know, I'm just learning, <laughs> you know, I used to be just such a Wednesday warrior. So this is me kind of like doing a, a deep dive education. All right. So we have them again this time in Mad Book. So I, I'm kicking myself. Like there were, there was at least one other issue of this and I thought I had it in my stack and I didn't and I forgot and I didn't realize until I got home. So I will definitely have to go back. It'll probably be only 75 cents. So I'm going to do the good. This guy... So this is, um, so if you can, you know, so this is based off of the Keith Lomer Retief series. I've not read it. I, I just, it's one of those ones I see at like every used bookstore or I would see it in the library all the time, but I never read it. Um, but we see art is by Dennis Fujitake and this guy is great. So this is 87. Uh, let's see what about, in California. Oh, Hollywood, California. Nice. Okay. 
So this publishing area, they're coming out there. And this is uh, Mad Dog Graphics. Uh, this art is amazing. I am absolutely loving it. Just totally great. There's cartooniness, and yet it's crisp. There's cartooniness. Like, all of the hatch is like, you know, none of it feels like that sort of, like, scribble, scrabble, scrib um, hatch. Like, it is all perfectly laid out. Like, look at this guy's jacket. Like, this is a master inker working on this. And I absolutely love it. Like, this is kind of like, you know, I am definitely going to be looking at this for techniques and ideas as much as possible. So this one, um, one of the things I'm, I, I have to get the other one. So I'm definitely going to have to get the other one. This, the art and this is too good to not get, get this. I will have to see if I can get the whole thing. Um, yeah, oof, great. All right. So Slave Labor Graphics. Um, I love this book. So Gary Winnick and Frank uh, Sirocco. Um, I don't, you know, I've not heard of either of those guys, but the art on this is so good. First off, that cover is great. The color is great. I like the colors versus, I would say, airbrush, possibly. This is, you know, definitely like that airbrush art era. But look at that guy. This, look at that black and white on this. This prints, I, you know, also all of this is the older paper. You know, one of the things is when I look in, at this point, when I look in long boxes, I look at the top and if the paper is not a certain color. I don't really want to pick it. Like, so if it's not got kind of yellow along the top, it that's two new books. Like the, that's when they changed over on paper and things aren't what I, those aren't the things I want to buy. I want to buy in this period when paper still yellow is like this, this newsprint. Um, this one's totally in my alley. I would even say like, the main character here is looks like, you know, kind of has a lot of analogs to um, Steelheart. Look, he's even got a, in a cavern scene just like I have. So, so this is cool. Like I, I feel this is a very serendipitous find. You know, um, I, the art's really great. I, I gotta love, love the brushwork. Of tones, of colors, like, you know, knows when to do the empty, you know, panelist, borderless books, you know, some guys with spears. Oh, yeah. So this is 100%, you know, Last Earth inspired. Oof. Look at that. Ken Stacy. Is that Ken Stacy? Oh, I love the art on that one. Hero Sandwich. Yeah, there's a lot of stuff here that I'm, I, I gotta, you know, a whole history of comic books I'm trying to uncover as I, Work on my own work as well. Samurai Penguin. Huh. Okay. So this is probably one of the more, of the things I got, this is one of the things I'm really prizing. I want to get a complete set of Shatter. Shatter was the first, uh, basically like, created on Mac, you know, with MS Paint comic book. And, you know, considering how much of a digital comic book I'm currently making. And, you know, if you watch the last um, speed drawing video from week six, you can see me doing sketching, just not even working from a pencil scratch, just using sketching my own stuff. And you're going to see that more right on the pad. This is absolutely a must. This has always been, this has been on my, for years, I'm like, I need to get a complete set of it. I've never quite pulled the trigger on it. And, you know, I was always kind of hoping to like assemble it from the wild, but I'm probably just gonna have to buy a set. But this is pretty awesome. And I would have to say the color really printed well. But I, you know, looking at it now, a book that would look like this now would be so, you know, they'd be kayfabing it. It'd be like when you put those fake ad, when you draw a fake ad into your book, you know, it's all, it would be almost like an, a nostalgia book. But this was, you know, cutting edge at the time, you know, first comics, you know, I have a ton of first comics and they have a lot of books, you know, the, the, um, the Hawk wounds I just showed you were first comics. So these are, this is something, this is the first of these I have number two. So that's nice. Um, I'm definitely going to probably have to get a set of these for sure. Uh, one of the days when 
time and money <laughs> and opportunity collide. All right. Now, this is some amazing art. This is Gene Gay's Black Zeppelin. Now, I don't know anything about this Renegade Press, but this is a, a Gene Day vehicle. He's like producing it, editing it. And a lot of the art is his. I think almost all the art is his. Uh, and this is a um, an art book for him, you know. So this is like kind of a featured art book, like almost like a studio book. Uh, I don't know a lot. I just read a little bit, but this, oh, it's so good. Like, and one of the things that really shows the strength of Gene Day, you know, coming in here with a very cartoony style, you know, uh, you know, a style I would love to get better at, you know, as I, as I progress, just really cartoony. And then you have a Charles Vespies. Now I have this as a, um, in a graphic novel from like Dark Horse that literally had no indicia on it. It like has almost no information about it. It took me a while to even, I can't, I'm even having trouble figuring out like when it was printed at times. So, but this is in this and that's printed on much better paper, but this, oh, it looks so good on this kind of yellowing newsprint. You know, I feel, I think some of the, the art is a bit lost in this, on this paper since I've seen it in the other form, but still, this is just still pretty amazing. You know, I love, it looks even smudged over there too. Um, finding that, oh, little treasure, little treasure. Uh, another Gene Day story, uh, this one winged Jupiter. So definitely a, a sort of, what is he saying? Um, fighter pilot story. So again, you know, doing a war comic. You know, went from a cartoon to this fantasy with Charles Bess, war comic. Oh, and Dave Sim. You know, I hadn't even thumbed through this long enough to even get to this part. So we have an, a Dave Sim, Sim piece. Look at that. Black pages. Nice. You know, that's understanding, you know, what to do when you have a black and white book, you know. Make a black page with white as the, the line work. Um, definitely works. You know, this is very like James O'Barr territory for me mentally. Um, but this is also something I'm trying to go for right now during the story, because right now in the story, there's the big part of it being underground. And so, you know, singular light sources, there's a lot of black coming around. Whew. Next issue, uh, Gene Day, Larry Dickinson. My goodness, I wonder if they made any more issues of this. Renegade Press. Um, oh, here we go again. Uh, Dalgota again. So I guess they're going to get it or they're kind of, oh, you know, this is the, oh, bonus feature. Each issue also includes Grimwood's Daughter, a dark fantasy illustrated by Kevin Nolan. Well, I got to see if I can track those down too. All right. Final one in the pile. Um, Roel, uh, this is serious press. So this is like cry for dawn, same, same sort of, you know, bad girl, but like really sort of borderline, you know, like, um, uh, spank bag almost, uh, stuff, but Joseph Michael Linzer, uh, this is a hundred percent no slouch of a book. Um, this is a wordless comic and I was looking at it and I am pretty sure they went straight from the pencils. So correct me if I'm wrong, but I think these are the pencils and they just printed straight from the pencils and they are amazing. This is Frazetta level good. Um, and it is, so I got to find the artist here. I, thumbed through this when I got home and I was just like, what? It's so good. Um, let's see. It is. All right. So let's see if we have at the end, I got to find out who this is. Yeah. So you can see it's all those poison elves and stuff like that. So it's 
example, that's Cry for Dawn. It's all the stuff but sexy. Uh, oh, look at that. Pinups. Yeah, these are all pencil. This is amazing pencil work. Like, pencil work so good. So, you know what? I think this is just, yeah, pinups, like, to be continued story. I wonder if this is Roel is just the artist's name because I think, I think he signed some of it that. Uh, let's see. Oh, you know what? It is. Well, that is even better than that. So um, there it is. All right. So thanks for doing this. Um, I will probably do a few more of these in the future. Um, as I kind of share some of the other stuff that is in, uh, informed my comic love and comic knowledge and, and what I emulate is my comic skills and work towards. But um, take a look at my, you know, if you really enjoyed this, like, follow, and subscribe, uh, hit the bell icon, um, and also check out my links in the show notes uh, for my social media, my merch store. Um, you can do donations at my coffee site and um, also just follow me on my website as well. So I hope everyone has a great time and talk to you later. Thanks again for joining me on my art process journey as I create my comic strip, The Last Earth. You can follow me on the web at www.pulptopixel.com and on Instagram and Twitter at pulp to pixel See the show description for links to my link tree, my merch store, and donation site. See you next time when we return to the distant future of the last earth.